The Public Affairs Department of WCFL Radio presents Dick Bigandi and Friends. Thank you for joining us. And tonight, my friends are... The mob. <laughs> we have with us three members of probably one of the hottest groups in the entire country right now, known as the mob, uh, all from Chicago. Well, I must qualify that. One is from Milwaukee, but Milwaukee is close enough to be Chicago. Um, we have Jimmy, Jimmy, and Al with us from the mob. Uh, Jimmy, Ford, how many people are in the group? And uh, tell us a little bit how it got started, where, why, and so forth. Well, Dick, there's seven people in the mob. And uh, around four and a half years ago, a group of us from Chicago decided to put together uh, a show group to do some recording, and, uh, and we started picking people from all different groups. It's actually made up of four different groups that were working around Chicago, and Al was working in Milwaukee at the time. And uh, the name of the group, we figured we're all from Chicago, and it would be a good idea. And then later on, we started out wearing double-breasted suits and coming out with the guns and stick them up and the whole thing. <laughs> and, uh, and later on, we decided that we didn't want that image to carry along with us anymore. And uh, now we just go the mob as a huge aggregation. We started working in Chicago for, oh, about four months. And then we went on the road, and we've been on the road ever since. Does the name the mob and being from Chicago get you the embarrassing questions? Are you members of the mafia and things like that? It used to a lot more, especially if you walk in wearing a black shirt, white tie, and black double-breasted suit. You wouldn't even have to tell them where you were from. They'd say, they'd say you're the mob, you know, before knowing it. Uh, we get a few jokes about it, but uh, we carry it in sort of a kidding way. And now that we don't uh, wear the suits anymore, it doesn't, doesn't happen quite as much anymore. In the beginning, it sort of helped, though, because you need something to, for an identity thing. Let me ask the other Jimmy real quick. What is the mob's music all about? What's it all about? Uh... I'd say it's just today's music, and it's we try to make it as exciting as possible, you know, soulful, a lot of rhythm to it. We dig dancing. We always performed since we, all, you know, we started up four years ago. We always did a whole dancing thing on stage because that's what we feel as we're playing it, and uh, that's what our original material is about. You know, it's excitement, makes you want to dance. Al, you have been sitting back here quietly. Listening. <laughs> Tell us uh, a little bit. Of, I, I know that you're a, a very hard worker on stage. Uh, how difficult is it with seven guys in a group? Uh, how well do you get along? And uh, are there any problems as far as your material and so forth? For seven guys, we get along remarkably well. You know, I mean, it's of course we all have our our problems, just like any other group. You know, and because there's seven of us, that's it's it's more. In, you know, more intense, but yet we all know exactly what we want out of this music, and that's what we're working towards of, you know. The music is like part of the whole thing, you know, working on stage together. We more or less turn each other on, you know, and Jimmy and Gary write all the tunes, and and we work them out, arrange them together, you know. And it's uh, just a, a great, a great fun thing, you know, really. All right, now anybody can jump in on this one. Why has it taken the mob four and a half years to get recognition? <laughs> <laughs> well, in the beginning, when we went on the road, we decided we had this picture of the great show group in the sky. You know, this was, this was our image, you know. We're going to eventually be on a 3,000-foot platform with the whole world watching us do our show. And so we went out and concentrated really on developing our performance. Yeah. Uh, five out of the seven of us were with Dick Clark in 63 and 64 doing all the tours. So from the back, we've seen just about every act in the business. And you could tell, you know, from the front, I don't know, I don't know Gene Pitney from the front, but if he turns around, uh, and uh, we saw which groups were able to capture an audience, which groups left an audience cold, even though they had a million seller. Yeah. And we realized that the performing end of it was very important, except we forgot about recording for a while and we didn't have a chance. We worked so hard on performing that we'd record, we'd take off three weeks to record, we'd take off uh, two weeks to record, and really never got into it seriously enough, which was really a shame because we have two great writers in the group. They wrote all the Buckingham's hits. And, uh, you know, we had so many strong tunes. And finally, just at the beginning of this year, we decided this is the year where we're just going to sit down and do it right. And we took off four months this year to record. We took off January to set a recording deal, 
we took off April and May to rehearse the material and put it in our show first so we could do it for a while. And by this time, we had maybe a selection. We could pick out of 40 songs that Jimmy and Gary had written, so picking the material was easy because it was like, you know, they all sounded like hits to us, and we just picked our favorite ones and put them in the show. And then we spent a month doing our new album. And uh, I think the reason that we didn't get the recognition is that we had this uh, real interest in the performing, and... Uh, now we're playing, it's unusual, we'll play, a, we'll play a college date, we'll play a dance for maybe where the average age is 16, but yet we'll be playing Puerto Rico where the average age is 55 years old and you can't get into the hotel without a suit and tie. <laughs> and uh, so it's like we've, we've tried to cover all fields and now we're coming into recording and uh, I regret not having a million dollars in my pocket these last few years, but I'm sure glad we have the experience now that we've picked up. Yeah. Let me break from the talk for a second and talk about your new record on the Colossus label. It's called I Dig Everything About You. Uh, Jimmy, since you're one of the writers, uh, uh, what about Give it? Give an unbiased opinion. What about uh, it? How, how did it come about, or is there any special story behind it, or did you just say, hey, I'm going to write a letter, a uh, song, rather, about a I Dig You Baby? He got this chick in L.A. <laughs> 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 I baby, I dig everything about you. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Most of the things... It's, you know, most writers, they write tunes, they sit down and say, well, I'm going to write five tunes today or whatever. And uh, the way Gary and I have been writing, it's not like that. You know, whenever the inspiration's there, we write. And that's why it comes out the way it does, I guess. But as far as writing, I dig, uh, gosh, we must, I think we wrote it a year ago. You know, I mean, we've been working and working on it and it just came out unbelievable the way the, the record version finally came out, what we wanted, you know, the feel and everything. I must interrupt you for a second, uh, all three of you and, of course, the rest of the group. Uh, the first time I heard the record being played here, uh, well, somebody in the other room said, is that the new Blood, Sweat and Tears sound? And uh, this is not a put-down by any means. Right. No. But uh, the answer from somebody sitting in the next office to the person that asked that question was, Hell no, they've been doing that thing for four and a half years. Right. right. <laughs> it's, <Let's>, go ahead. <laughs> it's unusual. Uh, the producer of Blood, Sweat and Tears, Jimmy Grissio, worked with us. He was our bass player around four or five years ago. And uh, when we formed the mob, I said we broke up three groups. And uh, Mike, Mike Sistak, who plays trombone and guitar in our group, and myself, had a group called The Executives that did all the Dick Clark tours. And we had fellas in it like... Uh, Danny Serafini and Wally Perizader and Terry Kath, who are now Chicago, and who are also pr produced by Jimmy Gershaw. Who produced so the, the Buckingham. Who produced the Buckingham. So the co big, coincidence yeah. of the Chicago sound uh, isn't so much of a coincidence. We've been working together uh, and knowing each other for quite a while. But I'm glad they said, is this a new blood, sweat, and tears sound? Because if they said, that sounds like the old blood, sweat, and tears <laughs> sound, then we'd have a meeting. <laughs> well, let's listen to I Dig Everything About You. This is The Mob. You know, 
You walk so nice, and you talk so nice. Oh, and you're just too much for me. And that's why I've got to tell you that. I did everything about you. Oh. We're talking with the mob, and they have uh, a brand new record out on Colossus. It's a single, and they also have a new album. We'll be hearing something from the album in a minute. 